Hello, I'm Julien. I'm the project manager and lead developer of Rockslope 2. And today we're going to go over the basics of Rockslope 2. Rockslope 2 is our latest program, which performs limit equilibrium analysis on rock slopes susceptible to wedge, planar, and toppling failures. It provides a single platform that enables engineers to perform all these three analyses in one place. Let's take a look at it. We're now in rock slope two. The first thing that the user will notice is that we have three blocks indicating our three failure modes, starting with the wedge failure on the left, with the planar failure in the middle, and finally the topping failure on the right. It's important to note that these three failures have been analyzed with a single set of slope geometry values, and we are looking at the same slope as we're speaking. To create or model a rock slope in rock slope two, you would have to go to geometry. And in geometry, we can see that we can define several parameters, such as the slope face dip, dip direction, the height of the slope, the length, or if the slope is overhanging. We even have some more information, such as the upper face dip, the upper face dip direction, and the bench width, which are very important parameters when engineers are analyzing open pits. For this example, we'll analyze a slope with a dip of 70, a dip direction of 0, and a height of 20. We'll input a length of 40 for this particular slope. And as far as the upper face is concerned, we'll keep the dip angle at 0 and have the dip direction set to 0. We want a bench width of about 15 meters, which is wide enough to enable vehicles to go over the slope that we're analyzing. And clicking OK will as you can see, trigger the computation and give you the geometry of the blocks which form for each analysis mode. From the get-go, we can see that the wedge analysis and the planar analysis are reporting blocks which are forming given the geometry that we've inputted, but there are no toppling blocks being formed. So the second part that we want to input in Rock Slope 2 is our joint orientation data. Let's imagine that a geologist has collected this data for us for the same rock slope that we're analyzing and has inputted this data in dips. Let's take a quick look at how this data would look like in dips. Here, we can see that there are about 283 joint orientations which were collected, and that the geologists even performed a kinematic analysis in dips. For the slope phase was 70 degrees, dip direction is zero degrees, and the friction angle and lateral limits set to 20. If we look at the planar sliding results from the kinematic analysis in dips, we can see that there are critical blocks which are forming out of the 283 blocks which could potentially form. Moving on to the wedge uh, kinematic analysis, we can also see that there's a higher propensity for failure, where in this case, there are almost 14,000 critical blocks which are forming out of the potential 40,000 blocks which could form from the intersection of the joint data which was provided by the geologists. Finally, we can also take a look at potential for toppling. And of course, we see that there are, in fact, anti-dip joints present, as shown in the stereo net. And out of the potential 283 toppling blocks, we can see that about 47 are deemed critical. Now that we know that there's a propensity for failure, this is where it's important to perform an limit equilibrium analysis. And this is where Rock Slope 2 comes in the picture. Going back to Rock Slope 2, we can finally import the data that we've just taken a look at in DIPS by simply clicking on the Import DIPS button. We can find our file, open it as we did previously. As you can see, the same number of joints have been imported, which are about 283. And clicking OK will trigger the computation once more. And again, in just a matter of seconds, we can see that Rock Slope 2 is able to perform a limit equilibrium analysis for all three failure modes. Looking at the wedge analysis, we can see that there are about 13,000 blocks which were deemed critical, similar to what DIPS showed us. Looking at the planar analysis, we see a similar number, which is about seven blocks. And finally, looking at the top plane analysis, we can see that there is about a similar number of critical blocks which has formed. This was a quick introduction on how to model rock slopes in Rock Slope 2. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. See you for the next video.